Good day my dear friends. So I just want to show you my September garden, my fall garden. It is kind of hot usually in California but it seems like we had a couple cloudy days recently and then we had that hurricane just before that. So the garden was kind of slowing down. Oh my goodness I thought these blooms were done for. I didn't think they were going to bloom anymore, but here they are, looking marvelous, beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at that one over there, so beautiful. So they're in my enclosure. I've been trying to deadhead them every day, um, just so that, you know, they keep on making blooms. But let me show you. I have some cantaloupe coming to me. I hope that they have enough time for the month of September to grow and get big and thrive. Um, so everything's been kind of slowing down. My green beans are not really producing. Look at these really sad looking ones here. There are some blossoms. Um, but really not very many fruit or the fruit of the beans and so when I was harvesting handfuls and handfuls every day it's now beginning to slow down so I'm not really getting very many things let's look at this here this cucumber plant is dying off Look at most of the leaves are dead, but for some reason the vining things, they start having green at the top, which is kind of weird. <laughs> so here are my green beans. There are just a few here and there that I left there to mature, but if you take a look where Whereas there used to be a ton of green beans, it's really slowed in production. So yesterday I didn't harvest any green beans and today I'm not going to harvest them either. I'm going to let these mature and hopefully give those a chance to make some green beans. And no cucumbers in here. The cucumelons, I've been cutting off all these little runners and I've been... So there are a couple cucumelons going on the other side that are getting bigger than these tiny little things. But I've been chopping and dropping these extras because I want it to focus on the fruit. And the okra are not producing very many fruit either except for that really big one right there. I must say the only plant that does not make you regret growing it is the Armenian cucumber. It has lasted the whole entire time and it hasn't really fully died off and it keeps producing and producing tons of Armenian cucumbers. Look at the size of that. Yesterday it was just half that size. And it keeps producing flowers everywhere. It's just a beautiful trellis right here. I love it so much. And let's see. The only thing is it's uh, because of those cloudy days that we had, it's starting to have uh, powdery mildew a little bit here. So I expect it to go away possibly soon because we had two or three cloudy, cloudy days with a little bit of sprinkling and I think that's what brought this on. However, in the coming weekend, we're going to have more sun. It's going to be in the 90s. So I don't know if they recuperate after they've gotten the powdery mildew. I don't think so. So the radishes are filling in and they grow really fast within 55 days or so and those weeds I've got to get to them, pull them out, 
there are some voluntary volunteering sunflowers because I had a, a huge sunflower growing here and the birds and stuff squirrels got to them and when they were pecking at the seed some fell down and they volunteered themselves some volunteering nasturtiums I gotta pull some grass seeds weeds out and then I've got lots of carrots growing right there in a row and I think that's the black nebula one versus the other orange variety that never really sowed, never really came up. So I thought that the corn was going to grow a second crop, but after the rain, it started to kind of like have some kind of powdery mildew or something at the top at, on the leaves, some kind of fungus or something. And they just gradually turned brown from the top coming down. So I'm going to cut them off at the base and just chop and drop use this as mulch. And meanwhile, <clears throat> there is some watermelon growing, but it's not growing very well. The same holds true for this corn, which I planted late. It's not going to do anything. It's already turning brown. I guess they just have a sh that lifespan that they have. So if you don't grow it in time, the seedlings, then they, if you don't plant them in time, then they'll just shrivel up. Either that or it's the cloudy days that we had, the rain. So this corn is just looking really awful and didn't really produce. It had a few corn, but... Um, it just dried up at the top, so I don't think it's going to be able to pollinate the corn below it. My brassicas are growing great, and once they get thicker in, in the stalks, then I can start feeding them to the chickens. So I've counted now, and I have five loofahs, and they are growing really, really big. This one is about the size of my forearm. <laughs> it, you can't tell from, there's nothing to gauge the size to it. But that's my biggest one, followed by a couple others. But that's a new one that I hadn't seen before. It's gotten quite large. I'm so excited. I'm going to harvest the seeds from it and grow more next year. So you're supposed to let the loofah dry out and basically the leaves, the vines, everything dry out including the squash itself and then once it's brown then you can peel off the outer layer of skin and then you'll have that loofah layer underneath and then at that time the loofah will be so fully mature the seeds will as well and they'll be able to be repro um, reproduced I guess you could say. So the seeds will be viable so I can grow more loofah from these loofah plants. And I will have the sponges which I just can't wait to use it for washing dishes with. I love it so much. And scrubbing things. I love that it has that um, that roughness to it. It'll be perfect and it's natural. And I don't have to purchase it from the store either. <laughs> this is the first time. I actually grew three of these and the two of them died for some reason. And this was the only viable one. And I grew it in previous years but in pots. And I know that vining things don't grow well in pots. Um, it's very challenging. You have to keep your eye on the watering and the fertilizing. So growing it in the ground is the best thing to do for vining things such as cucumbers, melons, squashes, everything. It's almost time to harvest my melons. These are my cantaloupes that are more mature. And I just grew these from seeds from store-bought cantaloupe a couple years ago. However, on the other side where I was showing earlier, I have the cantaloupe from, um, as a gift from one of the seed companies. I believe it was Burgess Seeds. Sadly, the animals got to my sunflower that I just grew. This was a two-color, two-toned sunflower. It's so sad. I mean, it did not have a long lifespan whatsoever, like a couple weeks. 
my moringa though this year is doing fantastic it's so tall oh my goodness this is the tallest it's ever been it's about five feet two inches i think i am so excited so i have this kajari melon my first few kajari melons were eaten by some kind of animal and i was so upset i had to save these um bags that have these um, mesh bags from um, you can get them from like things that are around oranges or onion bags and this one just fell off the vine so let's see because I know I didn't pull it off oh my goodness I hope it's not rotten <gasps> oh my goodness you guys this is my first Kajari melon and it had turned orange and it fell off the vine by itself. I'm so happy. <gasps> Look at this other one. Something broke into it and ate it. I'm so upset. That's what I'm telling you guys. So annoying. It broke into the bag even. These aggressive animals. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to bag this one. It's pretty annoying. I've probably lost six or seven Kajari melons to animals, but this one is doing great. Let's see what's going on there. It could be that it was pushed up against my trellis there, but it doesn't look like a bite. It looks more like a, like it was pushed up against the trellis. So this one's great. I didn't know it's about the size of your, your hand. So I wonder if that's the size it's supposed to be. This is my Kajari melon that's growing up against the chicken run and it just all but died because first some critter was eating them from the top coming down and then on top of that just the leaf, leafy parts. It had already eaten a fruit and then what happened was um, we had the hurricane and maybe the temperature it was too cold and too rainy. It rained a full day and maybe that's what caused it to die. I'm not sure, but the plant died. So I looked in here the other day and I saw a little Kajari melon still hanging on to its vine. Got two Kajari melons. This one seems a little mushy-ish. It has a weird feel, but I don't know. But they're orange and they were from this dead vine. So I'm gonna bring them in wash them, refrigerate them, and cut them open for the kids to try it this afternoon when they get out of school. Hi friends, it is a nice overcast day morning this morning. i um, not sure if it's really going to be an overcast day, but at least this morning it's overcast. It might get sunny later. Um, so I'm going to do some sewing. Uh, I, I hadn't done it in a while other than my new concrete, my concrete garden bed. I cleared up and planted some root vegetables and now it's volunteering a ton of sunflowers because I had a sunflower growing next to it and some wildlife got to the seed head and dropped some seeds. Um, but I'll just leave them there, I think. I'm not sure. Um, in the meantime, I have to find places to grow my new crops. So let's get started. I'm gonna do uh, some lettuces and I'll give you the rundown in a minute. But here's my cute little basket that I got from Target. And I really love it. <laughs> it's a harvesting basket, but it's got that rose gold handle and stuff detail. So it's not, it's very small, so it won't be able to harvest things in it unless they're like little 
tomatoes and stuff so I decided to set up my seeds that I was gonna sow in it today for what I'm gonna grow it's kind of like my organizational basket so it's beginning I'm going to be chopping down all this corn stalk and Although I didn't get a single watermelon from this vine, it's looking pretty good. I'll just let it keep climbing and growing and providing shade for my chickens. So the cucumbers are not looking too good. The green beans are starting to slow down. I only get a few green beans at a time. My okra's not... It's slowing down but not as significantly as the green beans but I don't know even when they're small they're getting kind of um, fibrous so we'll see I'll keep harvesting them young now this Armenian cucumber has been producing so much I think it's two plants maybe one but it just keeps blooming and taking off and looking so pretty in this trellis this arch trellis that I have um, of course, it's getting powdery mildew, so it's uh, because it was kind of humid a couple weeks ago. So I'm just accepting it as what is what it's the way that it is. And my radishes are doing fantastic. Some of the other root vegetables didn't do too well. I have a volunteer lettuce. I'm in the process of weeding these things out. Some sunflowers grew, volunteers, um, some carrots. For the first time I have a line of carrots. I think they're the black nebula. Awesome. And I kind of, I always, as you know, whenever I eat papaya, I throw the seeds in here. So it's growing a ton, but I have low hopes for them because they keep dying because the crazy weather. So now I know they don't like too much water. So last year I had some like three foot tall papayas, but because of the rains we had, they just kind of like rotted in place and died. So like I said, there's always some issue or another. Sadly, I had two cantaloupes here and they were bagged and something got to them and ate them. I was so, so upset. I was waiting for them to ripen and they got to it and made holes in it. I'm not going to be eating something that something not upon. Here's one they haven't found, but I'm sure they're going to find it before it gets a chance to fully ripen. Even more upsetting is the fact that something chewed on my loofah. Remember how excited I was about the loofah? Um, I was gonna get five. They've eaten three. So, and they started gnawing upon that one. And you see that one back there is eaten and then one is totally disappeared because it completely finished the other, the fifth one. So I've gotta bag this one and I have to bag that one. I know that uh, possums and raccoons, possums are protected species. But if they're eating things that people are growing, it should be outlawed that they're protected. Or like at least I wish the cities would come help you capture them and um, put them someplace else. You know, like at least that could be a service that they can offer, but they don't. I don't understand why the human species um, growing food can't take precedence over the animals and I'm not saying to eradicate them or kill them I'm just saying to remove them and find them a, a new home I found a pretty rose that I grew in a pot over here in the corner where my watermelons are check this out I just found this watermelon <laughs> it's a black diamond watermelon I think hopefully nothing kills it or eats it I just have given up on watermelons this year because they were like just real leggy and I didn't see any hardly any flowers and if I saw flowers I didn't see any fruit <laughs> I just spotted this one in the deeps of all this stuff so hopefully I have that one before some critter eats it I hope
Not a single yellow squash from this big vining thing. Quite annoying. And over here I spotted about a week ago another watermelon. It's growing on top of my container here that I was trying to grow um, the purple potatoes but I think I covered the potatoes too much and too quickly so then I ended up killing it because it had um, every time the leaves came up I was trying to cover it and um, and supposedly you're supposed to do that but not completely not so quickly and so I think I killed my purple potatoes potatoes, sweet potatoes, the Adirondacks, um, which makes me sad. However, here's my watermelon growing on top. So I'm happy about that. So I, here's my harvest today, um, 9-13, September 13th, 2023. Some okra, some one tomato. Um, I think that might be a bitter cucumber I'm not sure hopefully not um, down there is a kefir lime some green beans and as you can see it's a lot fewer green beans than usual and then of course I don't know how it is that I always miss these they're growing like underneath all the foliage and I keep missing them so this is the third huge Armenian cucumber I have the first one was uh, about my forearm size and length and then 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 one after that was like my calf uh, length and and girth and now this one is the biggest one of them all it's humongous I'm gonna break into it to see if it's at all uh, fibrous and tough um, if the seeds are fibrous and tough it's an Armenian cucumber it belongs in the melon family hopefully I can just shovel out the seeds maybe save the seeds and see if the fruit is um, edible. So as I'm breaking down my corn, cutting them at the base so that the roots will rot in place. So I just kind of cut it down right there at the bottom of the stem. And I'm gonna till in the soil, weed all the stuff that's back here, and then grow a new crop here. But, um, I opened up the secondary corns that were really small and in fact they do have corn and if I wanted to I could save these let them dry and then you know break them off and plant them next year but because this is a hybrid corn it may not be true to type of the variety that I grew um, which were really sweet good corn it was a sweet corn so I'm just gonna give them to the chickens so they can peck at it they love corn So now I have double netted the loofahs, that's one and that's two. I have to double net them because whatever it is, um, it's strong enough to tear the netting and get to the cantaloupes that I had. So I'm double netting it and I'm going to keep an eye on it every day because I really want at least two loofah now that they, it's eaten three and given me no choice, but I want it for... Um, to cut up to make um, dish scrubbers so this is quite upsetting but what can you do you gotta use your brain to fight the wildlife so here is that borage way that became corn rows that's now cleared and I grew some Brussels sprouts here and I laid out the hardware cloth so as to prevent something from digging my seeds um, as I have an issue with some kind of pest digging around. I only grew one row of Brussels sprouts. I have some volunteer papayas there and I don't know if I can grow anything here because this is where um, the corn was and I left the corn stalks down here so that the roots can break down. However, this is soil from the chicken run and I wonder if that contributed to the corn turning yellow bef before um, making its secondary corn. However, 
They said modern day corn only makes one ear for corn. So I, for corn plant. So I don't know. Um, however, this material has only been there for about a month and I don't want to put seedlings down and have them die. So I'm just going to let the soil break down a little further, give it more time. But over there, there wasn't any of that soil from the chicken run. So that should be fine. Something nice and tall there. The Brussels sprout seedlings that I put in here, seeds, um, they started to sprout, but then it seemed like they just kind of died off. So I don't know if it got too hot back there, but now it's being overcrowded by this squash plant that's finally taking off. It took it was small for a long time and now it's covering everything. So who knows? And it has flowers, but I don't know if it's gonna ever create fruit this season before it gets cold. Hi friends, so I finally cleared out this area that had the corn. And although my watermelon is now fully exposed to sun. I don't think it has a single fruit on it and it's too late in the season to make fruit because these were supposed to be big watermelon varieties. So, you know, the month of October and the rest of September isn't going to be enough for a watermelon to grow and ripen. But anyhow, it does look pretty. And so, um, I sowed some seeds over here. They're, um, let me show you the variety. So they are the Bota Botanical Interest Cauliflower Romanesco. And I've never grown this before, but it looks so beautiful. So I planted a row right here, sowed a, a row. And um, over there I have some vol volunteer papayas some borage. I've just been plucking it out and giving them to the chickens. Over here where I left the corn stalk stems, the roots, I'm just going to let it break down a little bit. I have a little bit of uh, the chicken run soil so it has some fertilizer in there and I'm not too sure about planting seeds in that yet. It's only about a month or a month and a half old. So this Romanesco is going to be perfect for fall planting into, into the winter. It's frost tolerant and I am starting my fall growth a little late because I was hoping for some corn, a second batch of corn, but that's okay. It's been overcast in the mornings, so then it starts to have sun around 10, 11, 12, and it heats up for only a short amount of time. So over here, I cleared out the other corn stalks and left the roots to rot in there, and it'll keep the soil nice and loose. And I sowed some seeds for cilantro, alternating rows of cilantro, and Long Island Brussels sprouts. And these are the cilantro seeds I kept from my cilantro that I grew early in the winter. So I haven't been showing you the garden from inside my enclosure. That is a huge amount. I didn't know they were late um, late blooming or late producing crops, but that's my cuca melons. It's growing really strong um, towards the latter part of the season. Let me try to focus on that cuca melon if I can find it. <laughs> um, I can't find it. Anyway, there are cucumelons. Oh, right there. There are cucumelons in there. And then I haven't been showing you that my peppers have finally bloomed and are making chili peppers. 
So I believe that's a jalapeno. That might be a sweet banana pepper. Some more sweet banana peppers. I've been collecting them as they ripen because if not, critters will come in here and eat them. And then I put some basil cuttings in between and I know it's late in the season and these just started to make peppers. They were um, seedlings and I had a late start to transplanting them and they struggled and finally they've come to fruit for me and the seasons um, I mean it's gonna be winter pretty soon so I haven't yet decided whether or not I'm gonna pull these plants up and pot them in some pots and overwinter them or if I'm just gonna cover this whole area that has both the basil and the chili peppers which are hot weather plants Hi friends, so finally my Armenian cucumber is suffering from powdery mildew. It started with a little, a few leaves and then it started to spread and then now it's powdery mildew and some kind of rust or fungus. So I'm going to cut down all the cucumbers out of there and then I'm going to take down the, all the leaves and stuff and throw them away because you don't want to have uh, your garden get disease from that. So the Armenian cucumber plant is just two feet away from my yellow neck squash and it looks like it's suffering from powdery mildew as well. So um, it hasn't given me any fruit yet so I might just pull it out. I haven't decided yet. Or I might treat it with some milky water. Hi friends, this is the aftermath. I pulled out all of the Armenian cucumber. Turns out I had two to three plants in there, which makes sense because I threw three seeds in the ground. Um, so they all took and that was what created so many Armenian cucumbers that we were <laughs> actually getting tired of it. So the fact that it got diseased um, I don't mind because we were getting tired of it. So in all we had four bags of uh, the leaves, the foliage, um, some weed, grass. Uh, there's three bags here because my other bag blew up. But our trash bins, we live in the city so they won't allow us to burn it. But if you live out in the country and you can burn it, you should burn it. Um, don't stick that in your compost pile. Um, it needs your compost has to get hot enough to kill the powdery mildew. So in this case, um, it's going to the dump, uh, but our trash bin's too small. So we're gonna have to stagger it over several weeks. But in the meantime, I'm hoping the UV rays will kill any remnant powdery mildew stuff here in the, in the ground. And we're going to clean this corner up a little bit and possibly grow something right here um, so we can harvest easily uh, right next to the house. The other thing I messed up on is that I should have watered all my plants, harvested everything, and then started with this dirty deed of um, taking apart this uh, diseased plant. Now I've got the powdery mildew all over my clothing so I'm gonna go inside take a shower come back out with new clean clothes and harvest and water my plants so that I don't spread the powdery mildew everywhere all over the garden.